What is going on guys and welcome to a new video and yes we're back again with another carry pack guide so obviously rolled out the last two melee guides and I just thought I'd give mage a go just to test what it was like I've not really maged anything in, in quite a long time like I used to do all the four ticking and all that kind of stuff um, but yeah it's been probably years since I last did any mage stuff because I just prefer melee as a combat style in general and then obviously range has been king if you want to do just maximum dps so i thought i'd give mage a go because i haven't tested out the new spells and i actually had a really good time doing it and i think this may even be more learner friendly than the melee setups that I, that I kind of went through with you guys in the last videos um so yeah i've, I've done like another budget setup guide um, and you can see kind of what I'm rolling with in my kind of invent and gear setup. I'll go over it briefly. Uh, I'll pop the full setup in the um, description with the spreadsheet link to all the items so you can kind of go through all of that. But yeah, it's a very similar kind of loadout in terms of price, like around the 250 mil mark. And that includes if you need to purchase the greater concentrated blast ability. I'm going to say that you should definitely purchase that before you try this because it's just awesome and it's like 60 mil so um, definitely get the great concentrated blast and now because um, obviously people are gonna for this guy is killing hard mood care pack i'm gonna assume that people have most likely got the pontifex shattering 2 which means they've done the city of centers and quest so they have access to the new spells so we're going to be using all four of the new spells to kill this boss um, so that's the smoke cloud animate dead examine and insight fear so all of them are going to come in useful um one thing that i want to add to the video guides going forward is kind of like so they the new glacial front boss that's coming out is breaking combat down into core skills and what i want to do is at the start of each video be like okay what are the core skills that are going to be needed in this specific guide so for this one the main one is going to be um switching from two-handed weapons to dual wield weapons so we're going to be using tier 85 uh wand and sideway orb but we're also going to be swapping to our gothic staff um, quite consistently to do that spec. Now, obviously, if you have like an EOF with a good thick staff in it, then fine, you can just do that. You don't need to switch. Um, but this is focused on the budget guide and trying to keep it as, as cheap as possible. So no EOFs or anything like that. You're also going to need to be able to um, swap to a shield slash defender and use some defensive abilities. And you'll also need to be able to do a little bit of soul split flicking. Now, the soul split flicking isn't essential. Um, and it's not like all the time. Um, there's a few points in the fight where it's really easy to flick because you take no damage. So I'm talking about when you kind of death dot underneath him so that um, the smoke cloud attack doesn't hit you. That whole period of that special, you can do soul split. And then also while he's doing his jump attacks, you can do soul split as well. So there's plenty of opportunities to heal. Um, and so yeah, they're gonna be the, the core competencies. In terms of the gear that I'm rolling with, I've done, I've tested quite a few different loadouts. And I actually, I forgot about the tier 85 Wanda Orb. And I started getting kills with Virtus Wand and Book. So this is totally possible with an even lower tier. But then remembered out the tier 85 Wand and Orb. And I was like, well, they're pretty much in the same price bracket in terms of cost. You know, it's like 10 mil for each. And the one and the Virtus Wand and Book is like 6 or 7 mil. So I think most likely people will have access to kind of tier 85s. And I did test a few different gear setups. And basically, we, I think when you're learning you should copy the setup that I've got here in terms of the tank armor. So I've gone, gone for the Ganodermic. But I did do some kills in like Virtus, and I think you could definitely basically sub out the top and legs for Virtus or Subjugation once you get a bit better at the rotation. Um, because, you know, you don't need all of the damage mitigation and you'll do more damage and make the kills go faster. So in terms of how fast these kills are, we're looking around the eight minute 30 mark was the fastest I got. Um, but up to kind of nine, nine and a half minutes, just depending on, you know, practicing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and obviously anything you can do to improve this gear is going to improve those, those kind of kill times. But yeah, I, I had a really good time kind of putting this together. I think Mage is definitely fun to use. Um, I don't know if I said it, but there's no four ticking in this. So um, yeah, hopefully uh, this will be useful for those looking to, who haven't even used or touched Mage in a while. Um, I want to maybe get back into it. All right, so I'm going to commentate over this. As per the previous videos, abilities will be on screen so that you can try and follow along with what's going on. So we're going to start the bank. We're going to pre-part our weapon poison plus 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 potion. And we're also going to do the animate dead ability. This is so that we don't have to take the runes with us, but we get the benefit of it throughout the kill. And it lasts 12 minutes, and the kill isn't going to be 12 minutes long. So we'll go to the adrenaline crystals. 
and will build up to 100 or 110 percent depending on whether you've got heightened sensors or not um, i do recommend heightened sensors just because i really like having that extra adrenaline buffer um, but you could also use berserk's fury so we're going to go in stall dren with preparation go to the back of the room pot up book on and then listen for when karapak is doing his voiceover when he says it's always you, World of Guardian, that's when we're going to want to throw our Vaughn Bomb and start going into our Sunshine. Now, I do use target cycling here to make this a little bit easier. Um, I don't do it perfectly, but basically I target cycle and smoke cloud, the boss, and then we're going to Adren plot, Pot and go into our Wild Magic. And then, oh, so we're going to Adren Pot, um, go into the Wild Magic when we can, do Greater Contemplated Trade Blast in there as well, and the Dragon Breath, so you can see Greater Contemplated Trade Blast, Dragon Breath, um, Adren Pot, Wild Magic. And then this is when we can uh, we can do another Great Concentrate Blast. And then we're going to Death Dot underneath Carapac to avoid the smoke attack and go into Ennis Fix. So you should be able to get the Wild Magic and another Asphyx off within this sun as long as you have a Planted, sweet fit, planted Feet switch. Now, one thing I want to note is that in this kill, I do a bit of spell switching. This isn't essential, and I think this is probably something that I'll cover more in the intermediate guide. Um, so you, I started off with insights, Insight Fear as my spell, so that I could do the Tsunami at 40% Adrenaline. Um, you can just camp Exanguinate for this whole kill, and that'll be fine. And to be honest, you don't even need the extra crit buff for this rotation, because we don't really have any Adrenaline dumping things except the Guthic Staff to, to use it with. So you're totally fine not to use Insight Fear during this but you can see that I've um, used my sunshine I've got a bit of a crit buff and then we're basically going to build a rotation around Great Concentrate Blast so this ability is awesome like it does so much damage it's got such a short cooldown and basically you want to be doing it every two three abilities so you do Concentrate Blast you do two abilities and then you do another Concentrate Blast so that's how we're going to try and work it now I don't do it optimally here because I'm still pretty new to mage and just getting that you know um I mean, ultimately, as in for the whole kill, uh, but it's not too bad. Whenever we have spare adrenaline and no thresholds to use and greater concentrated blasts on cooldown, we're going to dump it into a Guthic Staff, special attack, a special attack. That's essentially how this works. Um, and we're also obviously going to build... The, con the greater concentrated blast allows us to build um, stacks so that we can do uh, the Rack and Ruin as well. And ideally, we want to get that off in our Sunshine when we can. Now, uh, let's just get rid of this. So I'm just gonna go back a second to this first jump. This is a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's fairly easy to do. Um, or it can be a little bit tricky to get the timing right. So basically what I do is I run forward as he's about to hit me, and then I escape back into my sunshine. And the reason for that is so that I'm back in my sunshine and I can go into my second asphyx. And I won't get all four hits off before he slams the ground again, which means the last hit is half damage. But I don't think it's actually worth surging away here. Just take the hit, and then you can actually just put like a bleed on and then just run away. Now, this final jump, because it's the last one, isn't going to do the um, rapid damage. So you can just kind of wait for this to hit you and, and tank it. So, yeah, that's kind of the first part of this kill. We're coming up to the lightning walls. At this point, we're basically dumping thresholds, we're dumping Guthix staff specs, and we're balancing that all around Great Concentrate Blast. Um, and yeah, Rack and Ruin, when we can, that, 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 that ability does quite a lot of damage. So you can see we're around the kind of 220k mark to go on the first lightning wall. Now, we're going to want to sunshine again here. Um, and... Basically, just make sure you're not too close to the wall when the lightning comes because uh, that if it spawns on you, you're going to take a lot of damage and potentially die. And this is actually probably the hardest lightning to deal with because we're not going to use any defensives at this point. But we have some rotations for the second and third phase lightning that include some defensives, uh, which make it a little bit easier. So you can see here, we're going to go plant a feet switch into our sunshine and then start attacking the boss. Look where the lightning is coming from. Surge through. Take a little bit of damage, but it's not it's not too bad because we can soul split that back relatively easily. Again, we're going to want to build to those thresholds, try and get your wild magic and your asphyx off so that we can use them twice within the sunshine and balance all that around, create a concentrated blast. So remember to watch out for the next attack, which is going to be the smoke cloud attack. And you'll see that I'm MD to carry pack, and that's not by accident. 
with mage it can be quite easy to just drop your sunshine anywhere and start attacking the boss i found that the thing that i messed up on the most was getting underneath Karapak for that attack so that's why i'm in md i know that it's coming soon i'm going to be ready to dd underneath it and you see that I hit like 13k with rack and ruin which is pretty awesome considering you know we're in tier 85 gear and ganada ganadermic and um, that was a 13k crit so specs coming dd underneath go into a channeled ability just to be safe and you know we're, we're coming towards the end of this phase now we're dumping our thresholds we're dumping those g staff specs and obviously do using the greater concentrated blast um now the timing of this may vary a little bit between each kill but you should be phasing it sometime between now and the jump attacks kind of finishing um during this this part of the fight where he's immune to damage this is a good time to re-smoke cloud so we'll do this on every phase and um, you can just step away, wait, and then smoke cloud. Uh, if you know how to four ticker smoke cloud, you can do that as well. Um, whatever option is kind of available to you with your kind of um, skill set. Now, at this point, our sunshine isn't going to be off to cool down, so we don't want to use time warp yet. We're just going to be balancing that ability rotation, make sure we stay relatively high adrenaline so that we can go into time warp sunshine when it's off cooldown. Um, and try not to use kind of you know like your wild magics and your asphyxes because then they will be on cooldown so dd sunshine could, should be coming off cooldown around about now so time warp and then sunshine now in this part of the fight if you're lucky with impatient procs and you have heightened senses you can get up to wild magic within the time warp but that doesn't happen most of the time so what's actually better to do is probably do concentrated blast and a dragon breath and then go into a gothic staff because you most of the time you'll see here that I that I miss out on I have like fifty percent adrenaline when I get time warped back and I would have been better off dumping a Guthic staff spec here as opposed to trying to build to that fifty percent and get the wild magic off. Um, if you've got like limitless sigil, this obviously changes the rotation and you'll be limitlessing into a wild magic and a sphix. Um, but for anyone who doesn't have that, you're better off just jump, dumping that Guthic staff special. So we get time warped back. We're going to go into uh, wild magic sphix. Um, and you know all those other basics and, and dumping our gothic staff specials same again we kind of run away and then um, escape back into our sunshine now i should have gone into my asphyx there but um, i messed that up a little bit so escape back again i actually think i go into the asphyx here so that's that's actually uh, that's that was fine in this rotation and then we can go into our second wild magic um go to concentrate blast you know and you'll see here like even with my prayer, the wrong prayer off, I only got hit like a 1k by Karapak then. So the damage reduction from the tank armor from the animate dead spell is really quite significant in terms of how much damage you're going to take from this boss. Now, so you can see we're at about 270k here. Um, and we have another time warp and another sun available to us with the staff about to come. Now, the timing of this is a little bit... Uh, it, it's not it doesn't have to be right now the timing of it can be anywhere from kind of just before he does the staff special attack to after he does it to during it just need to be a little bit wary that when you get time warped back um it could put you into some lightning so you just need to be aware of that so um, i'm just going to go into it straight away here and i know the lightning is coming towards me and i know i'm going to get time warped back so i kind of run away from that lightning i know i'm going to get time warped here so i reflect and then, because I knew I was going to get time warped into some lightning, so I reflected for safety and then started attacking the boss again. It can just be easier to time warp um, Sunshine after the lightning, and that won't affect the kill too much. And it might actually even be more optimal, because obviously I was out of my Sunshine for a while there, I had to do some defensive, so it may just be better to um, to time warp Sunshine after the, the lightning on phase two. So yeah, we're going into our threshold, dump adrenaline with the Guthic Staff spec, um, and balance the yeah, around Concentrate Blast. Just such a good ability, I can't, like, it's just so good. Um, so you can see here, I'm, I'm in the MD. Again, not by accident, make sure you're in MD so that you can get underneath Karapak. That is definitely something that you'll probably mess up the most. That was the thing I found the hardest to remember. So we're underneath, into a channeled, and then we can come back out. And we just want to, you know, get this down to um, the next phase. And it's going to, the phasing of it is going to be somewhere similar to the end of phase one. So we're looking at, you know, somewhere between after the smoke special attack and the end of the jumps is kind of when you ideally want to be phasing this. 
So you can see we're, we're getting down to that 50k life points. He's going to do a jump, but that's fine. We can just avoid that with the surge and then just finish it off like so. So we're going to build to 100% adrenaline here. And if you are 100%, you can actually go into your time warp sunshine here. I wasn't quite ready for that. Um, I also am going to re smoke cloud the boss um, so that you know it'll take more damage. Now, this is probably the worst time to time warp sunshine because if you do it as he starts the, the, the phase the time warp will bring you out of the dd and you'll get a smoke like attack so if your timing of it is like this in this kill wait a couple of attacks before you do your time warp sunshine and then you can safely dd without being brought out underneath it like so so the rotation that i did here is probably well, I think I discussed this earlier. It's more of the advanced strategy. I, I remember to change over to Insight Fear um, to build those stacks before I did my Time Warp Sunshine, which meant that I could do my uh, Tsunami inside of the Time Warp. And then I'll get reset back and I can go into Wild Magic as fixed. So you'll see there. And I'm going to swap my spells back to Exam 1 8 as well. So I, I got the Tsunami off, I got the Crit buff, and then I'm back into um, my kind of normal rotation i don't know whether that's worth doing in this specific scenario because you don't really need the crit buff we don't have a spec to um we don't have a spec to, to dump that excess adrenaline from the extra crits um i just think it's quite fun to do two tsunamis inside of sunshine which is exactly what i did there um so yeah run forward escape back and then yeah you know you can see i'm doing good things stash specs because i'm pretty high adrenaline escape backwards so we're going to go into our wild magic um, and then we can tag this one because it's not going to because he's going to not damage us too much. So into an asphyx, and uh, you can see we're about two hundred and seventy k life points here. We know the lightning will be coming very soon, so we need to prepare for that. And it's a very similar situation to the the end of the second phase, but this is a little bit more dangerous, and um, it's probably worth waiting until after the lightning is done to. Um, to do your next time warp sunshine if you want to be on the safe side now i don't actually do that in this case scenario here i go straight into my kind of time warp sun when the lightning comes and run to the middle of the room now i know i'm going to get time warped back um i need to see here i've got still got a second on my time warp when all the lightning hits me so this is where it was pretty dangerous for me uh, because I didn't have a reflector of no debility and I was just basically tanking all this damage. Now I knew I was going to go back to full HP and 100% adrenaline so that I could reflect uh, but just be really wary of kind of doing this kind of thing. It, it probably is better to just reflect, deal with the lightning and then go into a time warp sunshine um, after you've cleared it. So get brought back into a reflect and the lightning is cleared. And yeah you know, normal kind of sunshine rotation, focus on getting those thresholds out so you can try and get two of them within the sunshine. Um, so get two asphyxes and two wild magics, dump um, your rack and ruins, dump your gothic staff specs. And the goal here is to get this down um, before the next lightning attack. So anytime between, you know, uh, now and the next lightning is when you want to, to be looking to phase it. So I'm starting to think about the next phase. I don't want to be using too many of my good thresholds. And I'm actually, you'll see here that I save Rack and Ruin as well. So you can see my ability is turned into Rack and Ruin, but I'm not going to use it to phase it. Uh, I'm just going to use my Gothic Staff spec to phase it. Prep, get prepped, get to 100% adrenaline. I'm in the position in the south of the room, so I can jump into the south clone. Um, and we're ready to go. So 100% adrenaline, jump into the south clone run away so that we can then jump into the north clone so we're going to pop our vitality pot run into the north clone and then we're going to run over to this section of the rune here this is where we're going to do time warp sunshine and this part of the fight and this specific section of the fight is where the anime dead and the tank armor really shines um, and you'll see the amount of damage that i take is just not very much at all so we're going into our sunshine. I saved that rack and ruin. So the first ability I'm going to do is to dump that. And that's all, all already an 8k hit. Um, and I'm going to have... Um, so I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to get to my wild magic within the time warp. So I dumped that Guthic Staff special. And the benefit of that as well is that it obviously helps with the affinity on the um, echoes. So we're going to get reset. And then we're going to go into wild magic is fixed. 
and just try and get this echo down as quickly as possible. Now, what differs slightly in this guide versus the melee guide is that we're not going to kill that echo because for every echo you kill, um, all of the echoes and carry back get a 50% damage increase. So the goal is to try and kill these next two echoes at a similar time and to also use them to extend our devotions. So you can see here that I've swapped to the next echo. We're just dumping Guthic Staff specs, um, dumping con Concentrated Blasts on there, just making sure that we're doing like as much damage as possible. I'm also spamming my Ripper on that's on the other echo as well, trying to get this down. Second Wild Magic goes in, and you can see we're, we, we've kind of got this echo down to 20k. The other one is around 20k as well. Um, so we've done sort of 160k damage within that Sunshine. And... We haven't really taken too much damage, you know, I haven't been chewing through food. Now we do want to use non-adrenaline consuming food at this point. So I am using blue blubbers and jellyfish exclusively to heal. We don't want to be using those sailfish. And you can just see the hits that we're taking are not particularly, you know, too disastrous. Now, so we've got one of them down to about 10k, one's at 20k. And this is where we're going to use a second time warp rotation. So we're going to time walk and we're going to devotion. And the goal is now to kill one of these to extend this first devotion. So you'll see here, we kill this first one, devotion gets extended. And then we're gonna kill the second one, devotion gets extended again, and then we can go over to the third um, uh, echo. So at this point we've killed two echoes and we've only used one devotion, so our devotion is still off cooldown. Now we're not gonna, uh, we've, we've still got six seconds on our first one because we managed to kill those two at the right time and get a double extension. Um, and that's why kind of balancing the HPs is really crucial at that point in the fight. So at this point, I'm going to put on my defender and go into revenge and then reflect. And the reason for that is that when you've got reflect up, even though these two, even though Karapak and the Echo are in rage, the damage that you take isn't too bad. And we're going to just try and stack as much damage into this Echo as we possibly can. So... Um, you know, great concentrated blast, strong hitting abilities. When you start to feel like you're taking a lot of damage, that's when you want to pop your next devotion. Uh, you see, we go into an asphyx, uh, and we're just basically trying to do as much damage on this as we can until our devotion runs out. Now, I'm keeping an eye on my devotion. I know that it's got two seconds left on it, so I'm eating up, and then because I know that my damage, I'm going to start getting hit a lot. And essentially, I want to try and build to 100% adrenaline. So I, I haven't used my adrenaline pot at this point, so I'm going to use that to build my adrenaline. Um, so you see uh, a Dren pot, I'm at 100%, and then I'm going to go into a Time Warcade. Now, I've done kills where I don't do that. You can see this Echo is nearly dead, um, but you just start taking a lot of damage at this point in the kill. So it's, I just found it easier to just do the Time Warp, do the Cade. I pop a res here, and then drop another Cade. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're just basically waiting for Time Warp and to come off cooldown now, so that we can go into another time warp rotation and it's just easier just to not take the damage now i don't actually have tailing four on the shield so with tailing four you could obviously take even less damage and have your keyed up for even longer but it's not kind of essential once that time warp runs out you want to be using reflect as i do here um, you can use preparation so you can use a, a res later on and once your reflect runs out you also want to use uh, debilitate You'll see that my time warp has, has come off cooldown. Now, I was actually waiting for my devotion as well, so I could do a devotion time warp sunshine rotation, but I didn't realize that it my um, the devotion wasn't off cooldown. So you can see here, I time warp, tried to devotion and realized that I couldn't. So I just go into my sun um, and actually take a res here because I was taking a lot of damage. Time warp back, strong hitting, um, thresholds into a debilitate because I'm just trying to get as much damage out here as I can. I know that I've got some food left. Um, if you have less food, make sure you wait for that devotion so you can do devotion sunshine or devotion, sorry, time warp devotion sunshine and then you can go into a second devotion again. So I'm just using that food to get in as much damage as I can. I know my debilitate's up for another few seconds. Once that debilitate runs out, I go into my second res because I used the first one in the time warp. Um, just drop, and then we're just going into you know as many strong hitting abilities as we can. It's almost dead at this point, so I decide just to tank the damage. But I do have devotion and res off cooldown. Uh, sorry, devotion and reflect off cooldown. But yeah, that's 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 kind of it for a mage kill. You can see that my supply level at the end is still relatively good. You know, we've got um, two food, two brews, 
and a spiritual still left. Um, and I don't think I used my enhanced Excalibur spec either. So um, definitely Mage is quite friendly and especially on the last phase, there's a good tank options to not take too much damage. All right, so that is gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. Um, some of the rotations that you can do with Mage, obviously anything you can do to upgrade the gear will make it easier. Um, you know, full disclaimer, I'm not, you know, as competent with Mage as with, uh, you know, some of the some of the other styles. So some of this was still testing and learning and then maybe more optimal opt more optimal rotations to, to kind of get kills. Um, but yeah, this was kind of a, a showcase of what has worked for myself. I do plan to do more testing around this, uh, particularly for the intermediate guide. I would like to do a lot more testing around uh, spell switching, which is the best one to use at the right time, how to incorporate the tsunami and effectively use the crit buff and the adrenaline gain from that. Um, so I'm thinking around, you know, testing things with the channeler's ring, um, different EOF magic abilities. So obviously you've got the gothic staff, but also, you know, the Armandal battle staff is now a potential option. Um, I don't know whether that's only just good with the uh, the new uh, fractured armor staff spec, um, or whether it's potentially can be used without that as well. So um, yeah, that's kind of uh, going to be it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified of you know future intermediate guides coming out. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.